Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and welcome to part 24 of our series on making a custom character controller in Unity. In this video, we're going to be giving our vehicle the ability to travel in reverse, which is going to give it that full range of motion forward, backward, and side to side. So let's jump right into our vehicle controller script. And the first thing we're going to want to do here is we want to think of this like a vehicle in the real world where when you're accelerating, your accelerator doesn't really care which direction you're heading, it just propels the vehicle. What then decides whether you go forward or backwards is whether you're in a forward gear or a reverse gear. So we can kind of do this or simulate this by creating in our current vehicle states here, one more state, I'm going to make this a boolean, and we're going to call this in reverse. And that's simply going to tell us, like it sounds, is our vehicle in reverse at this time. Now, in addition to doing this, we're going to want to make sure that when we first start our um, this component up, we want to make sure that that is false. There might be a possibility of you know that it was true when it got um, disabled or something, so we'll put it in here just in case. Make sure that's false, and then we also want to have it a way to tell our vehicle to go into reverse. Now, how we're doing that based on our control scheme for our vehicle is. We don't have anything going on with our vertical axes right now. Up and down don't do anything for us because traditionally you're always moving forward anyway. So I think what we're going to do is use the down button. And when we're holding down that down button, that means we're in reverse. So we can do that by, similar to how this is checking is the left right axis not at zero, we can check is the up down axis pointing down. So we'll say if data.axes zero, which is our up-down axis, is less than zero, meaning it's in a negative position, then in reverse can equal true. Now, in the similar way to that we're um, setting in, in reverse and in new input to true, we need to make sure we're going to set those to false back down here. So after Excel change and current turn, I'm also going to add in reverse equals false. So this is resetting all of those states so that if next frame we pull all of our, you know, we release all of our keys, we're not continuing to be in reverse when we shouldn't be. Last thing we need to do, um, actually that covers all of our state situation. Now we need to actually implement the acceleration in reverse. The actual physics of it is the same as what we've been doing for accelerating and braking in forward. It's just going to be with negative or you know, kind of reversed values. But in actually implementing the you know mechanics of this, it gets a little bit stickier. And the reason for this is that there's now like kind of four base states we can be in. We can be accelerating forward, we can be braking while moving forward, we can be accelerating in reverse, or we can be braking in reverse. And then there's sort of edge cases beyond that, like say we're accelerating forward, then we hit reverse and brake, how does that handle that? And so this can get very sticky, we can end up with a lot of if-else statements or conditional statements, trying to check for different cases. The really the easiest way for us to implement all this is to actually just kind of break apart accelerating and braking into two different things, because now that we're dealing with reverse motion two, these two actions, accelerating and braking, are doing two fundamentally different things. Accelerating is moving us toward a max speed, whether that's forward or reverse, and braking is trying to get us back to zero. So there's two different things there. They will both be kind of using this structure here of taking our velocity and applying some sort of acceleration to it, but they're going to change dynamically in terms of how we check what those numbers are. So what we're going to want to do is create another method down here. I'm going to call this void break. I'm going to put a float in here as well. We're going to pass in a float, but I'm going to call this one decel for deceleration instead of acceleration. And I am going to copy, I'm going to copy all of this actually, because the same general structure is going to happen in here, but it's going to happen a little differently. I do have to change Excel to decel. And in addition to this, these are actually both going to change because as we see here, this one is still considering um, sort of a zero braking speed. So we are going to make some edits to both of these. But we'll save this right now. And the other thing we want to do is we want to now make sure that when we're either braking or decelerating, we're using this method instead. So we can do that pretty easily. All we have to do is change right here where we're decelerating. We're going to change that to brake. We can keep the decel rate per second. 
And likewise, up here, when we're pressing the break button, which is this, um, here we can even break button, we can change this to break as well. I have not really commented this code very well up here. We should, I should probably um, do that a little better and say things like steering, reverse, and accelerate button. There we go. Okay. Now, back in our accelerate function, the first thing we want to do is we're going to add another variable in here. We're going to add a float, and we're going to call this reverse factor. And what this does is just simply checks, are we in reverse gear or forward gear? We can do that very easily by saying, using a conditional statement saying in reverse, question mark, asking are we in reverse? If so, reverse factor is going to be negative one. Otherwise, it'll just be one. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to, similar to what we've done here, we're going to apply our acceleration. However, we have to add the reverse factor to it. We're going to multiply our acceleration, not just by time dot delta time for frame rate, but also by that reverse factor. Lastly, where, we're, where before we were clamping between zero and max speed because we were always going positive, now we can clamp between negative max speed and max speed because we're just going to say for now, for the sake of argument, that our reverse speed is the same, our reverse max speed is the same as our forward max speed. This isn't how traditional vehicles work because usually reverse is in a much lower gear than your top gear going forward, but we're going to kind of abstract that for now. That will be fine. So with all that, our acceleration is actually good to go. Now we need to change, make the changes to our braking. Braking is kind of a different thing now though because we're trying to get to zero but this could be from a positive value or a negative value. What this really means is we're dealing with absolute values because we're taking if it's any kind of a if there's any kind of velocity whether it's positive or negative we're trying to reduce that. So the easiest way for us to do this without having a lot of if else checks is to just take whatever our velocity is, strip out its positive or negative value, reduce it and then check if it's check if it's gone past zero. So here's how we're going to do that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to have our float reverse factor here as well, but we're going to treat this a little bit differently this time. Braking doesn't care what gear you're in. You can be in forward or back, it's still going to try to get you to zero. So what we really care about is whether or not our current velocity is moving us forward or backward. So here what we're going to say is mathf.sign forward velocity. What mathf.sign does for us is says if the forward velocity is positive or zero, then it's then that will return a one. If it's negative, if it's below zero, it will return a negative one. So kind of like what we're doing up here. So that and that gives us that number pretty cleanly. We could do it with a um, conditional statement like this, but the method does it for us, so we'll just keep it as that. The next thing we need to do is instead of adding directly to our forward velocity, we, like I said, we need to strip out that positive or negative element of it first. We were keeping track of the positive or negative element here, so now we can just make it into an absolute value. So we're going to say forward velocity equals mathf.absolute of forward velocity. So now we're just, whether it's, if it's negative, you know, say the speed is negative 100, now it's 100. If it's 100, it stays 100. Now we can actually apply this deceleration in the same way that we've been doing. We can simply say forward velocity plus equals the deceleration times time dot delta time. We're not going to apply the reverse factor here like we did here because we want to make sure that we're keeping that absolute value positive for right now so that we can do our next step here, which is going to be checking whether or not we should be at zero. So the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to say forward velocity equals, we're going to get rid of this. We are going to use another math f function. We're going to say math f dot max forward velocity or zero which basically says if we have pushed our velocity, which we now know is positive in our current state, it's currently positive no matter what, if we've pushed it below zero, then we should have just stopped at zero. So if we went below zero, snap it back to zero and we're done. 
Now we can actually apply that reverse factor because we know that we're either at the right speed and we just need to be going in the proper direction, or we're at zero and we can multiply zero by the reverse factor and it won't matter. So we'll say times reverse factor and that's all good. We're going to keep this Excel change because if we're pressing a break, we are applying some sort of acceleration change. Now, there's one other thing we can do here. This works just fine in all cases, but there is one situation where we don't even need to do all this, which is if we're pressing the brake and we're already stopped, then we have no need to actually brake. So instead of actually calculating all this, I just want to say up here, if forward velocity equals zero, so if we're at a dead stop, just return. There's no need to do anything else. Now, technically speaking, this will run, to, if you're braking and you're already stopped, we're going to call brake, return immediately right here, and we're never actually going to set Excel change to true, which means that then we'll still try to decelerate, but at the same time, we'll still be at zero and never, so it won't change anything either way. We can avoid that double call of the method by simply adding in Excel change equals true up here as well. Not Again, all of this is kind of optional, but it's a good optimization. So with all of that, we are now actually able to move in reverse, accelerate in reverse, as well as brake in reverse. And these will work no matter what the gear is in, in any of those edge cases as well. We can jump back over to Unity and try this out. So I'll hit play here, and we'll see now, as normal, I can press the acceleration, that works. I hit the brake, slow right down to a stop. I can also now hold down S for being in reverse, start accelerating backward. Now I'm gonna release both of those, but press the Z button, and I come to a stop. Even though I'm no longer in reverse, it's not trying to break me backwards and shoot me forward or anything, it still breaks normally. So with all of those, we now have a vehicle that can move forward, backward, side to side, as we would expect, and we can um, navigate our scene. So what's really left here is now to actually be able to make our character, our player character that we had in the first vehicle, or in the first um, set of videos, be able to actually um, walk up to this vehicle and enter it as part of our, um, as part of our scene. So we're going to handle that in our next video. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, one quick addendum to this video. I realized I had kind of made a mistake in that if we accelerate backwards, we can't actually steer. We can do it if we're moving forward, but then once we start going backward, we are locked into just going straight. Uh, that is not what I was intending with this. So the easiest way to um, fix that is that the reason this is happening is because right I have up here, if moving forward, turn the vehicle. We just want that to be if moving, turn the vehicle. And so we can do that nice and easily by just changing this to if forward velocity does not equal zero. We'll hit save there. And now we should see that even if we're moving in reverse, we can steer. And that works as we would expect it to. So um, yeah, just a quick, uh, quick fix there. And that works as promised now. So um, thanks for watching again, and I'll see you next time.